Thousands of sandbags are being used to help protect the interstate in Columbia County as flooding continues to be a problem throughout southern Wisconsin. This is News 3 at 6. Thanks for joining us. Damage estimates are going up in southern Wisconsin after weeks of major flooding. Right now, according to Governor Walker, there has been around $208 million in damages. Dane County is seeing around $155 million in damages alone. Emergency officials say the tally is far from complete and these numbers will likely grow in the weeks ahead. Communities throughout Sauk County are devastated tonight as water from the Baraboo River continues to flood homes and businesses. News 3's Rose Schmidt spent the day in North Freedom and Rock Springs and tells us about the lasting impact these floodwaters will leave. The entire downtown area of Rock Springs is currently underwater. Luckily, though, this is about as high as the water is supposed to get here. It's too bad. It makes us feel like our town is going to turn into a ghost town. After living in Rock Springs for 48 years, it's hard for Carol Zanin to see her village under floodwaters. It's awful for everybody. Anybody that lives in Rock Springs finds this devastating, finds it sad. After being hit with two rounds of rain, businesses downtown might not be able to withstand the downpour and may not reopen. Nobody wants to see this. But they are seeing it as they drive or walk by like Carol does every day. A few miles away in North Freedom, if you can even get there, the scene isn't much better. It's been pretty overwhelming, especially when we thought we were pretty much done with it on uh, Monday. But they weren't. Floodwaters now causing an estimated quarter of a million dollars in damage at the Mid-Continent Railway Museum, where Nancy works. The museum is home to more than 100 cars and locomotives, 75 of which were taken to safety. Since the trains are dry, uh, we just have to get our depot, our restroom, and things like safety for the riders in, in check. But I think in a month we ought to be able to, to knock those things out. That's when Nancy is hoping the museum will open by the first week in October. The first three weekends in October are, are kind of our big weekends. In the meantime, they're just waiting for the water to recede so that the cleanup process can begin. The Baraboo River is expected to crest here in North Freedom either tonight or tomorrow morning. In Sauk County, I'm Rose Schmidt for WISC News 3. There are several roads and bridges closed near Rock Springs and North Freedom, so be careful if you're driving through that area. Students from Reedsburg will head back to school next Monday, a week after originally planned. That city seeing a lot of flooding. There are bridge issues there. Some roads like Highway 33 remain closed in the area. Without being 100% certain of our student and staff safety, we made the decision to close school down for a few days, which is uh, frustrating for students and staff, but safety being our most important issue, we decided to make the call that way. The principal says they are still working out if the district will need to make those days up later, but he says the graduation date will not change for high school seniors. We should see quite a few dry days. Let's check in with Chief Meteorologist Gary Canalti with our first alert forecast. Hi, Gary. Hi, uh, Charlotte. With all the rain that we've had recently, uh, this is exactly what we need, a prolonged period of dry weather. It started today, and it looks like it could last through all of next week. You can see how the clouds have moved mainly south of Wisconsin, uh, thicker clouds across northern Illinois, just some thin mid and high level clouds from Madison southward and north of Madison. The sky's been mainly sunny. Doppler track shows a few sprinkles of rain about as far north as uh, Rockford, Illinois. Those have been diminishing, and uh, right now Wisconsin in the clear, at least as far as precipitation is concerned. The air is drying out. Now, last night we had a low of 58 in Madison. Take a look at Black River Falls. They were down to 40 degrees. Camp Douglas is at 46, and that's a function of that drier air moving in. At night, those temperatures can cool off pretty rapidly when the air is dry. High temperatures so far today, generally low to mid-70s, only 60s near Lake Michigan, thanks to a breeze off of the lake. But current temperatures are around 70 here in Madison, a little warmer to our west, a little cooler to our east, and those dew point temperatures continue to fall. They're in the upper 40s in the northern parts of our viewing area and lower 50s from Madison and southward. By tomorrow morning, look for skies to clear out. Temperatures will be down to around 50 degrees here in Madison. Tomorrow, look for partly sunny skies. Another breezy day, but still very nice with a high temperature of 74. That's your first alert forecast. Gary, thank you. The National Guard is building a nearly mile-long wall of sandbags to keep parts of I-9094 dry. Keely Arthur is live in Portage, where crews are focusing their efforts. Keely? 
Charlotte, 50,000 sandbags are needed to keep this water from potentially flowing into Interstate 90 94, which is about 50 yards behind me. Members of the National Guard working very hard on and off since Sunday to keep that water at bay. Officials with emergency management here in Columbia County say this stretch of interstate near Highway 33 in Portage is typically very vulnerable. It's area that that's what it's for is to catch water and uh, fortunately or unfortunately we have interstates running through it. Emergency management is looking for volunteers to help the National Guard fill those tens of thousands of sandbags. If you want to help, go to our website. We'll have more information on how to volunteer over there. Another way to help, be patient. Authorities say you could expect up to two-hour delays here on the interstate, but really a small price to pay as crews continue to work for your safety. Safety number one. Keely Arthur reporting tonight. Keely, thank you. In Madison Lake, Monona is at a new record high after rising two more inches. It is expected to crest sometime today. This morning, the lake was measured at more than 848.52 feet. That is 10 inches higher than the 100 year flood level. That number expressed in feet above sea level. Time is running out to have the recycling fee waived for flood damaged appliances. Madison City officials say the fee sticker waiver ends tomorrow. On Saturday, all items that require fee stickers will need one before being dropped off at the streets division drop off sites. Flooding in Dane County is causing changes to the bike route for this weekend's Ironman Triathlon. The changes will impact the first and last three miles of the bike course. Right now, the swimming and running courses are not affected, but organizers say they will be removing debris and monitoring water quality up until the race. Ironman will be held throughout the Madison area and parts of Dane County this Sunday. Volunteers are needed to help with flood cleanup in Laval. There's a special event tomorrow. Volunteers are being asked to check in at the Laval Volunteer Reception Center at the Laval Town Hall anytime between 9 a.m. and 3 p.m. You can find out more about the help needed just by calling 608-355-3200. Flooding in Rock County will be worse than officials originally thought. The National Weather Service saying water levels on Lake Koshkanon could reach major flood stages. Rock County reporter Adam Duxter joins us from our bureau at the Janesville Gazette. Adam. Well, for a while, it looked like that Rock County was going to be able to dodge the better part of the flooding that has been going all throughout the state of Wisconsin. But today, finding out that's not the case. And it's got residents around here thinking about the last time the flooding was this bad. The water along the banks of Lake Koshkanong is moving fast. And within the last day, it's gotten worse than first predicted. Most of this has happened within the last 24 hours. But when it starts going over the shoreline, it moves pretty fast. Kay O'Connell was around when Lake Koshkanong reached the 15-foot mark in 2008. It flooded her house. Now the water is on its way up again. They're only predicting over 12, but that will happen a week from now. And then again, by that time, we could be having more rain. So it's hard to predict where this flood is going to go or how high it's going to go. O'Connell is planning to sandbag, and so are others along the Rock River, including along Lake Koshkanong and south of Janesville near Afton, where water levels are now anticipated to crest at 11.7 feet. After three weeks of rain, even officials are wondering when it will end. This has been a little surprising, the amount of rain and, and how fast it has come. I mean, it's day after day, it seems, uh, that we've had to deal with very significant rainfalls and coming on the heels of all the rain that we've had up north it's, it's just a bad situation for our county and for the people that were around during the floods of 2008 it's starting to feel like deja vu i'm not looking forward to another flood let's put it that way the 2008 was was enough you know you hate to see another one come County officials adding today, stay out of the flood water because you don't know what really is inside that water. If you're looking for sandbag locations in Rock County, you can visit our website, channel3000.com. All right, Adam Ducks are reporting. Adam, thank you. And you can stay up to date with your forecast. Download the Channel 3000 First Alert Weather and Traffic app. Just search Channel 3000 in your phone's app store. Coming up, here from Packers quarterback Aaron Rodgers before the team's home opener against the Bears this Sunday. Plus, Madison police are releasing new information about a shooting from earlier today. We are live from the scene. That's next at 6.
Police are searching for a man who shot another man in the leg this afternoon. The shooting happened at the Crossings apartment complex, which is on Madison's west side near Elver Park. Jamie Perez arrived on scene shortly after the shooting, and she joins us from there now. Jamie? So police are still searching for that suspect. Earlier today, they had this entire apartment complex area completely blocked off. You can see that's no longer the case. They also had to bring in their canine crews to help assist. Now, as far as the shooting goes, here's what we know so far. The suspect and the victim got into an argument, which ended in the suspect shooting the victim in the leg. The victim is said to be okay and in the hospital with non-life-threatening injuries. Police tell us they've gotten conflicting witness statements saying they saw him drive off in a van. Others saying they saw him run into an apartment there. Because they don't know for sure, they're reviewing some surveillance video and keeping police presence on scene until they feel that residents are safe enough for them to leave. But I think they'll keep the police presence here until they feel pretty confident that he's not in this area. Until they get to that point, there is probably going to be a police presence here, so I'd ask people to be patient. And as soon as they're finished checking the buildings and other areas around here and are confident he's not here, then I think they'll release the scene. Police say if you know who the suspect is to call Crime Stoppers. Otherwise, be wary of this area as they still don't know where he is or if he's still armed. We'll keep you updated with all the latest. Tune in tonight at 10 for all the latest information. For now, back to you in studio. Jamie, thank you. There's an effort to help seniors better afford Dane County's rental market. And it's a feud being fought over Twitter concerning the NFL protest. The tension between Governor Walker and Democrat Mandela Barnes next at 6. In weather, dry weather today will continue for tomorrow and for the weekend and probably all of next week as well, which is great news for those flood prone areas. I'll have your first alert forecast in a few minutes. Republican Governor Scott Walker is calling on all NFL players to stand and not take a knee during the national anthem. Walker issued a series of tweets ahead of the NFL season kickoff. In one tweet, Walker asks Democratic challenger Tony Evers where he stands on the issue. Walker also retweeted a January message from Evers' running mate, Mandela Barnes, where he posted, take a knee, in reaction to a story about whether Trump knew the words to the national anthem. Barnes responded by asking Walker, you could have served in three wars. Why didn't you stand up then? 
Lieutenant Governor Rebecca Clayfish accused Barnes of kneeling during the anthem. Barnes called her a liar. Two affordable housing developments in Dane County have received significant state housing tax credits. The Wisconsin Housing and Economic Development Authority, or WIDA, announced over $2 million in state housing tax credit awards for the Fitchburg Senior Apartments and the Artesian Village. The Fitchburg Senior Apartments awarded $932,000 and will feature 160 units. 1.2 million in state credits were awarded to the Artesian Village, which will have 169 units of affordable housing. Between these two projects, over $700,000 of freed up disposable income. And, and for those of you who are local leaders, just think about what that impact will be. The ability for people to not only pay their rent, but have additional dollars for the things that they need for themselves and their families. For over 45 years, WIDA has financed more than 70,000 affordable rental units and has helped more than 125,000 families purchase homes. It is no longer just women who are interested in plastic or cosmetic surgery. More and more doctors in that line of work say they're seeing men. Over the last 20 years or so, the increased number of men getting those procedures is equal to the growth of female patients. Doctors at the UW Transformation Center's Plastic Surgery Center say that's due in part to less stigma around getting plastic surgery. I can tell you many of my male patients, they're coming to see me because their female spouses or girlfriends or wives had the procedure done and they liked it and they convinced the men of having the procedure. Mark Kane will take a closer look at the trend of more men getting plastic surgery and the story of one man's weight loss after four surgeries. That's coming up tonight at 10. Chief Meteorologist Gary Canalti joining us with a forecast we have been waiting for for a while. Finally, Gary, perhaps a chance to dry out. You know, for three weeks, it's like Mother Nature just couldn't shut off the, the faucet. And all of a sudden, phew, it's, you know, it's turned like off. And, it. You know, and then we may go uh, at least a week and a half without any rain. But there are some reasons for that, and we'll, we'll take a look at why that may happen. But the rain totals over the last few weeks, and these are still kind of unofficial numbers. We've been trying to work with the National Weather Service and look at some of the other, uh, some of the major reporting stations so far. But between 11 and 12 inches of rain from Madison, Wisconsin Dells, and Fond du Lac, La Crosse, uh, over 9 inches, Mineral Point, about an 8 and a third, and just shy of 8 inches in Milwaukee just over the last three weeks. But now the rain is moving to the south. You can see thicker clouds across northern Illinois. A few of those thin clouds getting into southern Wisconsin, the rest of the state sunny, and the 8 to 14 day precipitation outlook is calling for below normal precipitation just to our south. Equal chances of above or below normal precipitation here in southern Wisconsin with above normal precipitation over northern Minnesota and along the Gulf Coast. But temperatures are expected to be above normal through much of the country with the highest probabilities from the southwestern part of the country right through the Midwest. We're looking at about a 60 to 70 percent chance of above normal temperatures in the period all the way through September. September 20th. Live view from the Queenby Radio Sky Cam in Platteville. You can see some of those cirrus clouds. Also the WISC Sky Cam showing those looking out toward the west. Those are drifting in from northern Illinois. Otherwise, the Edgewater Sky Cam in downtown Madison showing sunny skies over the capital. The almanac for today shows a high temperature of 73, the low temperature at 58. And right now we're sitting at 70 degrees. The winds are out of the northeast at 10 miles per hour. Dew point temperature has dropped to 53 degrees. So first we take a look at Hurricane Florence. It has weakened a little bit. Notice the uh, clouds shearing off to the north and east. There's some high level winds that are kind of ripping that storm apart a little bit. Right now it's down to 80 miles per hour uh, maximum sustained wind, so just barely a hurricane. But the latest forecast from the National Hurricane Center turns it toward the west and then starts increasing the intensity as it moves over warmer waters and that wind shear starts to go away. And here's the United States. So sometime by the middle or latter part of next week, it could be affecting somewhere from the Carolinas northward toward New York City. As that happens, high pressure may develop out ahead of it. Now, right now, that high pressure system has dried out the air. Temperatures very comfortable, 60s and 70s. But notice the dew points in the 40s through much of northern and central Wisconsin. Those 70 degree plus dew points are down toward the Ohio River. So while this high pressure system is building, as Florence, which is still well out in the Atlantic Ocean, moves eastward, it's going to build up that high pressure system and keep the threat for rain down to the south. And that will continue our dry forecast, like I said, probably through next week and into the following weekend. So our forecast for tonight calls for a low of 50. The skies turn mostly clear. It'll be cooler for tomorrow, a high of 74. A little breezy. Other than that, partly sunny skies, and that breeze actually helps with the drying process. As we look at future track, notice those northeasterly winds dropping temperatures to around 50. There could be a couple of showers into far northern Illinois, but those will 
diminish. And then you can see on Friday, partly sunny skies, high temperatures mid 70s. Tomorrow night, we clear out, low temperatures dropping back to around 50. And Saturday, that east to northeasterly wind keeps high temperatures in the mid 70s and brings partly sunny skies. As we look at the 7 to 10 day forecast, those temperatures start warming up gradually, but it is a dry forecast. Mid 70s by Monday, around 80 by Wednesday, mid 80s by the following weekend. We'll add a little humidity toward the end of next weekend. All we've heard this week is uh, how much better Khalil Mack will make the Bears defense. We'll hear what Aaron Rodgers thinks about that in sports. News 3. The Packers have beaten the Bears eight of their last ten meetings, but there are more than a few people that think the Bears are going to give the Packers some trouble when they meet at Lambeau Field Sunday night. The biggest reason for that was the Bears' addition of Khalil Mack in a trade with Oakland Sunday. Mack might be the most disruptive defensive player in the National Football League, and there was talk the Packers were in the running to get him, but they didn't. So Mack will be chasing Aaron Rodgers all over the place Sunday night, an idea Rodgers has been getting used to all week. You have a week between games after this week. You know, it, it's so you adjust on the fly. There's injuries that happen. There's additions, subtractions. Um, that's just football. We, you have to be able to adjust even within a game. If uh, somebody not named Mac is having a big day and getting after getting after me and, and moving the pocket, you have to adjust. So that's what, uh, you know, that's what we all get paid to do. Coaches get paid to schematically figure that out, and we get play, paid to block it up and make it work. The 2018 NFL season is just about ready to start. Tonight in Philadelphia, the Super Bowl champion Eagles host the 2016 NFC champion Atlanta Falcons in the first game of the season. They'll start just after 7 o'clock. The Badgers are 35-point favorites to beat New Mexico at Camp Randall Stadium Saturday morning at 11. New Mexico, the Lobos, it's where Brian Urlacher played in college. The Lobos head coach is former Notre Dame head coach Bob Davey and former Badger assistant coach Kevin Cosgrove is New Mexico's defensive coordinator. The Lobos beat Incarnate Word in their season opener 63-20 to last week. As far as the Badgers go, Paul Chris said tight end Xander Neville and defensive alignment 
Isaiah Loudermilker on track to return from their injuries Saturday. Kind of a goofy schedule to start for the Badgers. A Friday night 8 o'clock kickoff followed by a Saturday morning at 11. Paul Chris says just another challenge. There's all a lot of firsts and those young players when we go on the road will be their first road game. And so I think any time that you go through a first, whatever that may be, it's something that they haven't experienced yet, so they got to go through it for the first time. But that's what's kind of fun about the game is each week it's a different set of challenges, different um, different things that you've got to adjust to to be able to give yourself the best chance to play. Tomorrow night, the Prep Mania High School football game of the week returns with DeForest at Wanakee. We're live from Warrior Stadium tomorrow night, 7 o'clock, TVW and Channel3000.com. The Brewers have the night off. They'll host the San Francisco Giants starting tomorrow night. The Cubs are at Washington tonight. The Cubs lead the Brewers by four games in the NL Central. The Brewers hold the first National League wild card a half game ahead of the Cardinals. And nothing moves the needle like Tiger Woods contending in a golf tournament. And not only is Tiger contending in the BMW Championship and the FedEx Cup playoffs, he's tied for the lead after the first round. He started on the 10th hole and he shot 29 for his first nine holes. That's only the sixth time in his pro career he shot under 30 for nine. The first time in 11 years. Tiger goes eight under 62 today. So does Rory McIlroy. So they share the lead at the BMW Championship. A year and a half from spinal fusion surgery. He can still play a little bit. A lot. He's a lot. A good, good end of the season. All right, Gary, final check. Boy, you like, got to like this 10-day forecast. Not a drop of rain in it. Uh, sunny skies uh, through the weekend. And temperatures, like I say, uh, very nice all the way through the end of next week. All right, Gary, thank you. Thank you for joining us for News 3 at 6. Enjoy your evening, and we'll see you back here at 10.